All right, friends. I think that's pretty close. Let's start cycling through the cameras, do a quick check, make sure everything's working. Howdy there. Workbench cam is working, overhead cam is working. Hello. This is working, maybe a little crooked. I don't know, we're gonna play with this a bit. We can get it closer to the work surface. Okay, so I'm just firing up another stream real quick. Probably gonna be about an hour. Um, if you blink, you miss it. What I want to do is continue what I was doing yesterday, um, which is, I've got three more of these devices. The uh, Sanoff S31. These are AC power control devices and energy monitors. And uh, to give you the spiel again, the thing that's nice about them is inside here is an ESP8266 microcontroller. Um, it comes with some firmware. I don't care what's on there. I'm, gonna, I'm not even going this is fresh out of the box. I'm not even going to turn it on. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is crack it open because I'm going to flash it with new open source firmware that works with Home Assistant. And I was unsuccessful getting it. I did one of these yesterday. I was unsuccessful getting it on Home Assistant yesterday during the stream, but I did manage to do it once I got back in the house. So as you see there, I pop off the end, a couple rails slide off. This reveals screws. And then I get a nice screwdriver to get those out. Maybe I can do that without totally uh, sticking my hand in the way of the camera. But it comes apart pretty quick. And as you'll see, inside there are some like serial programming ports that I'll be able to um, hook into and reflash the ESP8266 in there. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to control some lights in my kitchen, and there's a couple of other things around the house I'd like to turn on and off. And I want to do it from Home Assistant with all local software I control. So okay, got the rails out, got the screws out. Now this thing just lifts free from the plastic housing. And as I said yesterday, you can see all this. I'm actually going to turn on the lights here. So maybe you can see some more. So yeah, so you can see the guts here. Um, pretty heavy duty stuff in here. Not going to touch any of that at all. Not going to plug this into the mains while I'm working on it. Um, what I'm interested in is this part here. And you can see at the top there, there are little shiny circuit board pads. This is a serial interface. Uh, you got ground, uh, you got a bunch of other pins. I'm mostly interested in the uh, transmission, receive, and voltage here. And I can connect to those with these probes. And these probes are connected to this USB serial, serial interface. And I, yesterday, set it for three volt logic, as you can tell from the uh, little blobs of solder on that side. So I got a quick review of what I did yesterday. Now, the tricky, slightly tricky bit is getting these to seat on the, uh, the pads and not spring off. I did this yesterday, I'm gonna do it again. Hopefully I'm a little smoother at it this time. So we got, um, one goes here. And that's just kind of like a little metal finger that grips on there. Way to ground, do power. And it's funny because this device works off um, 120 volt AC, but the microcontroller works off of three volt, 3.3 voltage. And let's see, so I used, blue 
for transmit on the serial board. So I think that means blue goes on receive on the board here. And then green, I connected to, yeah, green is receive. So green goes to transmit on here. I had trouble with the transmit yesterday too. Let's set this down. You can't see it as well that way, but um, hopefully it'll be a little more stable. I see why I was kind of doing an awkward hand position yesterday. Okay. Those are all connected. They're kind of awkwardly cramped, but you can see they're touching the pads. I think the transmit isn't exactly right. There we go. Well, just for posterity. I've got these roughly on the pads. They just have to connect well enough and be stable while I'm flashing it. So I'm going to set this to the side here. Now the tricky part, I'm going to program this from a web page. I have to power it up while holding this button. That's a button. I got to hold it while I power it up. That'll put it into program mode. There's a little bit of a finger jungle juggle yesterday while I was doing it. Hopefully I can get it to work today. Maybe I can do this very carefully. All right, the flashing lights give me some hope that that was like the initial debugging stuff. Okay, that's all set. Now the special thing is there is a web page. Yeah, this one. In Chrome, uh, there is a web serial interface that can use the serial ports on your computer to talk to devices. And from there, we can program microcontrollers. So I'm gonna try connect. Uh, COM port 5, I think that's the correct COM port. It's trying it. And I think I might have got it on the first try. We'll see. Um, install Tasmoda English. Go ahead and erase that device. Let's go. All right. So it's starting up. Looks like it's working. So soon, while this is spinning. It's erasing. That's the thing that I think just happens on board without much uh, serial activity. But now it's installing. So now you can see that red light's going. It's blinking. Every now and then the green light next to it flashes. I think that's just it going back and forth. Um, that's it spewing data at it. And then that's the microcontroller um, confirming the packets. I'm going through this real fast because I got two more than I want to do after this. And I want to get them all on my home assistant network because I think I cracked that problem yesterday. So there it goes. It's going, it's going, it's going. It's about 65%. So yeah, so the cool thing about this is this I've been streaming for, uh, what, like 20 minutes so far? It took me like 10 minutes fresh out of box to get this thing to the point to where I was already lobbing uh, open source firmware. And these are selling for like seven bucks an hour, so, which is what's cool about them. All right, so installation complete. The next thing I have to do is I have to get it. It's going to reboot. And when it has rebooted, which hopefully happened while I was doing all this. Nah, I don't think it's rebooted yet. It's a very exciting stream of firmware flashing. Yes, very, uh, very, uh, Pack the Gibson kind of thing. Let's see. I don't need to re-reinstall. I'm hoping that it just installed and I need to get it to reboot. Maybe I need to like remove the power. I want to be careful not to like bump the other pins that are on here. I want it to power up without my having touched the programming pin. 
on port five. There we go, okay. So now instead of it just giving me the um, install prompt, now it's telling me it detected this version of firmware, it detected this kind of microcontroller. I could try installing again, but what I really want to do is change Wi-Fi, because now I want it to connect to my Wi-Fi. And I'm doxing myself, I guess, I don't care. You can see what my, uh, my uh, Wi-Fi point is called. If you have done a war drive past my house and found me, just wave. So now it's connecting to Wi-Fi. Hopefully that works. And it connected to the network. So now what I can do is visit the device. And now, lo and behold, this thing has a web page on it, or has a web server on it, which is pretty cool for something that's like, I don't know, not much bigger than my thumb. I come from the age where uh, web servers were gigantic uh, pieces of machinery, and now it fits on a thing that's very, very tiny. All right, so now it's on a web server. This is not the interesting part. The interesting part is I put it back together and I plug it into a wall socket. And that's an important sequence. <laughs> I put it back together, then I plug it into a wall socket. Because this thing runs on mains voltages, which is much higher than 3.3 uh, volts. So the process of reassembling is pretty much the same as this assembling. Put it back in the plastic housing. Slide the rails back on. Oh yeah, hey, wait. Put the screws back in. Let's not forget that. And ideally, what I'm going to show you next after I get it put back together is I will show you my installation of Home Assistant. And I will connect this to the MQTT server. I forget what MQTT stands for. It's like message, queue, transport, fuckery, I, I don't know. The important part is that I can include this device in my automations. I'm gonna switch into Home Assistant from Homebridge. I've never used Homebridge. I kind of have like skipped any Apple or Google IoT stuff. I kind of didn't want to deal with it. Let's see, am I putting the rails on the right way? No, I'm not. Yeah, Home Assistant was actually my first kind of delve into uh, IoT anything. There we go. All right, and then the matchup, the pegs. Because this only goes on one way. It just kind of goes in there. should snap in. Hopefully I don't break it. I, um, oh wait, the rail isn't quite in there. I also have a ticking clock on this uh, stream because I have uh, barbecue chicken and an instant pot inside. So I'm challenging myself to get this done and then go back in and uh, finish cooking dinner. Oof -da. But yeah, Home Assistant has been pretty good so far. It's got some obscure bits to it. But, I don't know, it's been great. This, um, ooh, this is giving me trouble. Why isn't this going on? Um, it's a little annoying because it's, it's programming devices through YAML. But also it works. Because there's another firmware you can put on some ESP devices. Why is this trouble? Uh, there's another firmware called ESP Home. And I've done that with just some like, Huh. That didn't work either. There's ESP Home, and it has worked out all, all right for me for um, just kind of some homebrew circuits. But for some reason, Tasmoda works best to these Sonoff devices I've found. Huh. This thing is annoying me. It's a little weird because there's these little pegs that I have to line up. Like everything, it's easier to take apart than to put it together. Oop -doo -doo. 
It doesn't look like it's all that complicated to mesh together. And I think, yeah, I've got the pegs lined up. There's a time it took me 20 minutes to try to put this together because I was trying to squish it together with the pegs in the wrong orientation. Oh, come on, you little bugger. You go that way. I wasn't thinking this was going to be the hardest part of the, uh, the process. I must have mashed something up. Did I maybe put... I mean, as far as I know, these rails only go on one way. Yeah, these rails only go on one way. I'm tempted to leave that off, but uh, it's not great to leave off. Goes like... <laughs> the chicken! Yeah, I do have a bit of a timer going here. Well, that doesn't make much sense. Well, now it went back up. I don't know. It's fine now. So, hopefully the next one goes faster. This is the other thing I want to show. So, okay, now it's all put together. You can see it. I'm going to plug it into this power strip. If I were thinking, I would have brought a lamp out or something. I wasn't thinking. But, so, okay. Let's bring this camera over there, and I'll just kind of cover it here. The bright idea I had, demonstrate it, is I have a power strip. And the power strip has a, has a power light. And you can see right now, it's off. My streaming setup is amazing. Thanks, I've been trying to get just the right set of cameras and graphics and shit to make it fun. All right, we're looking at that. You can look at the screen capture. So here's the thing. I can reload the page. It's back online. That's cool. Um, the not as exciting part is I can hit this button here. I don't know if you can tell. Let me turn the light out on here real quick. The lights are off. I'm gonna watch for this. There, so I click, and when it says off, that light's off. When it says on, that light's on. Very exciting. I can control an AC device now. That's not the super exciting part, though. The super exciting part is now I have control of this device. Make sure I don't knock this over. I have control of this device. I can configure it. Configure MQTT, this is the important part. My uh, home assistant is at 192.168.036.236. Um, again, whatever. If you come by my house, wave. If you happen to get on my network. Um, not gonna tell you that, well, also I just did tell you that password, so whatever. <laughs> doesn't matter. You have to be like have physical access to my network to get to this, I think. And I'll probably change it all later. Anyway, no, don't save that password. The next exciting thing. My OPSEC is uh, not superior. So here I am getting into Home Assistant. Oh, yeah, I gotta log into Bitwarden. I think I remember my password just off the top of my head. Let's see if I remember that. Okay, cool. I just remembered the password. Awesome. So now uh, we're in. You're in, you're into my home network. Uh, what is cool here now is hopefully I go to settings, devices and services, as Moda. Um, well, it's only found three devices. I guess what, what I'm looking for, there's some things I haven't set up here yet. Figure the module, 
I want it to be a sun off. 31. Save that. <laughs> this this demo that's playing over on the side is awesome too. It's a demo they made on a European pharmacy sign. Which is pretty great. Um, I got all this right. Oh, the user. User is MQTT, the password is MQTT23, which I'm going to change later, so it doesn't matter. And then it's going to reload. Oh yeah, and I want to change the name of this device. I think it's configure other. Device name, yeah, I'm calling this... S3104, because this is the fourth device of this kind that I flashed. And at some point, I'm going to label this. MQTT seems great because it's like a, a message queue broker for low power devices. So I think it's made for devices that just like wake up, squirt out some data, and then go back to sleep. And then the always on computer handles everything else. But it's a two way thing. So like, when the device wakes up, squirts out some data, Home Assistant can then send some commands back. So it's for like things that wake up and go to sleep periodically. I think that, I think I'm right about that. I might be wrong. Um, so, oh, okay, cool. So I, I changed that username, I changed that password for devices. So as you can see here, my other three are in service. I've got some black lights in my basement. One of these devices turns the black lights on and off. I got a Miss Pac-Man machine down there. One of these devices turns her on and off. And I got some lights at the right side of my counter. Um, one of these turns that on and off. What you might be able to guess is this one is destined to turn the left side of the lights on. And now, I should have left this stuck over here. Now what I want to show, so I showed you Turning it on and off from the built-in web interface. And that's still working. You can see the red light up in the corner there, turning on and off. Now that it is recognized by Home Assistant, I can do this. I click this little switch and it turns on and off. Not much more exciting, but what's cool about this now is now this little switch is part of a system and I can automate it. What the automations look like are things like this. Like I've got um, my 3D printer will notify me when it's done printing. Um, I turn off the kitchen counter lights at night. I turn on the kitchen counter lights in the morning. Uh, when the doorbell rings, we've got an ancient doorbell and I have a little ESP32 device there with a read switch. And when the doorbell goes ding, it flips the switch and this sends a notification to all our phones. Um, well, what I'm gonna do here Add an action. So these are automations in Home Assistant. It's pretty simple. It's uh, turn off the kitchen counter lights at night. When the times are on midnight, no other conditions, turn off the lights on the right. Oh, I know what I want to do first, actually. Devices, Asmoda. I'm going to rename that device real quick. Doop, 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 doop. There's an edit button here. Yeah, I'm going to name that. Counter lights left and that's in my kitchen update that um no let's not rename them this is also a weird thing you can give things friendly names and it'll also like give it a, a slugified whatever mangling of the name as like a machine id i like to leave them as obscure machine ids i don't know because the names will change often if I move the devices around. All right, so back to automations. Turn the kitchen counter lights off at night. No. Oh, I want some um, switch, right? Turn off. Turns the switch off. Choose a device. Kitchen counter lights left. I think that's it. So there, now at about midnight, once I plug my kitchen counter lights into this widget, I'll turn the left side off now too. Um, 
And I can add that to uh, turn the kitchen counter lights on in the morning. Like around 5, 15 a.m., I want the kitchen to light up. So then I say, um, switch, turn on, choose device, counters, lights, left. Yeah. And I think that's it. I'll look at that again. Yeah, these look the same, left and right. I'm wondering why this one says call a service, switch turn on. I don't know why that one says that. I know it worked. Oh, yeah, I don't know why it says call a service. That bugs me. Let me change that. It worked. So I don't think it matters. Um, yeah, I think I just don't want that to say call a service. Maybe for aesthetic reasons. Switch turn on. Choose a device. Pinch and counter right. There we go. Now oh, they look the same again. So, one more review. This turns both left and right counter lights off. I've got like little LED strips under my counters that are gonna plug into these. Uh, turn the counter lights on in the morning at 5.15 a.m., turn these both off. Uh, one more thing to do. That's cool to automate. I also want some manual control. And another cool thing in Home Assistant is you can like design these panels. So like this is my Nest thermostat. There's some other telemetry here. I can control some stuff in my living room. I can control some stuff down in the arcade. Uh, my car is on this. Some, for some reason, our car is on Wi-Fi. Uh, but yeah, so just a quick thing here. I can edit this. I can add a switch. Oh, and see, it's already like the newest device already shows up there. Yeah, our, our, uh, our basement is an arcade. Well, a corner of the basement is an arcade. There we go, I can add that. I can uh, change the order. All done. So now I've got a manual switch on here. The other thing that's cool about that is there's the Home Assistant app. Oh yeah, and if I click that, hopefully the power strip light turns on and off, yeah. So now I've got a manual switch on here that turns this Wi-Fi device on and off. The other cool thing, I've got the Home Assistant app on my phone, which is an iPhone, not the most open device in the world, but um, bu, 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 bu. You can go to this and maybe you can like, you can see my phone. Yeah, it's kind of sideways. Yeah, there we go. You can see my phone and I can go to the, the kitchen tab. I can go to the kitchen tab and then now you can see like. So there you go. Like, uh, I've been streaming for about a half hour, and I just got a new device fresh out of the box. Packed it. Got it connected to uh, Home Assistant. That was what I was trying to do yesterday, and couldn't quite make it happen, but there we go. Well, that's technically all I wanted to get done in the stream, but I think I'm going to spend, like, I don't know, another 15 minutes, because I want to flash two more of these. Same process, though. So, okay, back to here. I'm gonna unplug this one. Actually, before I flash more of them, I wanna mark this one so I don't get them all confused. I thought I had a Sharpie around here. If I were thinking, I would've brought my labeler out here, but uh, I did not do that. Now I got a pencil. I'm gonna do this real quick. I'm just gonna write three on it. Oh no, four. And then when I go in the house, I'll uh, put a proper label on that and everything. So, all right. One more time. Here it is, fresh in box. It's on off. That's 31. Um, take it out of the box. I have not plugged this in. I don't care what firmware is on it. This is like fresh out of box.
There it is in all its glory. Um, all right. Maybe I'll be faster this time. My uh, handy dandy I fix it spudger. Slide off the rails. Remove the screws. Now this is of course like more setup than any like I guess normal sane person would want to do with an IoT thing, but the thing I like with this is I know what it's doing. It doesn't leave my network. Like I feel like a lot of these IoT things bounce off a cloud service. So like you hit a switch, it goes out to the internet, it does something somewhere, telemetry is registered in someone's uh, data collection service. Then it comes back to your house and tells the thing to turn on. This all happens just directly within my my LAN. And it's pretty fast, too. It's all right, screws are out. It's free of its housing. Pretty um, heavy-duty crap on this side. Again, ignore it all, because we're going for that. I'm gonna disconnect it from USB real quick. But yeah, it's all local. I make it do whatever I want. I know what it's doing. I can reflash it. I'm not saying that I'm like auditing the source code or anything, but like, I don't know. I'm pretty reasonably uh, sure that it's been looked at by a lot of people. Oh yeah, and the other thing this, so this firmware does that I need to play with some more is it isn't just a switch. It does also um, monitor current and power consumption. So it'll do things like I've seen people do stuff where like, I don't know, you hook it up to a coffee machine or because it also can take 15 amps. So it's like pretty like it's more it's more robust than a, than a clapper. <laughs> Let's see, uh, green is received, so that goes to transmit on here. But anyways, you can hook this up to something and create an automation that watches power consumption. And when the power consumption goes up, we know the thing's running. So, oh, what am I doing right now? Right now, I am, now that, I've, now that I'm done with it, I got these little spring-loaded probes that are very awkwardly placed and they're each gripping a pad on here and this is basically a serial interface and so we got ground you got vcc this powers up the microcontroller so i don't have to plug it into the wall and there is transmit and receive on serial and then these are all connected to this little usb serial widget an FTDI friend from Adafruit, which like 15 bucks. Had it for a bunch of years. It's not the best possible thing. All right. Ooh, it just fell over. That's the other thing is that these are spring loaded. They'll fly off real easy. It's a challenge to keep the entire rig physically stable while you're doing this. So now the, the, the tricky part. I've done it a couple times now, so maybe I'll get good at it as soon as I don't need to do it anymore. There's a button here. You hold the button. That puts it into programming mode as it boots. Hold it before I give it power. Then slide in the USB. And if I did everything right, it's now in programming mode. So then we can do this again. On um, port 5, connect, connecting, and it looks like I did the needful. So yeah, I went through it super fast, but it basically the process is get these, uh, get these pins connected with these probes. Get this little serial widget set up and happy. You can see the red lights going. That means it's uh, it's transferring data again. And now it's just overwriting the factory firmware. 
And what's really cool about this is this is done in Chrome because uh, Chrome comes with a web serial interface. So Chrome, when given permission, can access your serial ports. So that means I didn't have to install a flasher. The flasher comes straight from the web page. Uh, which is great because I only need this, this installer long enough to, to do this, and then I don't need it again. Well, I mean, until I get another one of them. But that seems like a, like a great thing for this kind of purpose, is you only need it as long as you need it to go about. Yeah, there's like uh, Bluetooth, there's, you can, there's even web USB now. I haven't used it that much yet, but you can like connect directly to USB devices from a web page. All right, installation complete. Now the thing's gonna need to reboot. I think what I had to do last time is remove power, reapply power. We saw some promising light blinks. I say connect, connect, and it worked. So second device flashed on the stream. Here's the firmware I installed. Here's the uh, microcontroller detected. Change my Wi-Fi. Do, do, do. That's one of my neighbor's things. Trying to connect. Not too bad. I got uh, maybe 15 minutes left planned in this stream. I'm hoping I can do one more of these before I call it a stream. Kind of ambitious, but they're going pretty quick. All right, device connected to network, visit device. And there we go. Um, now I'm gonna do, I guess before I unhook it, I'm gonna do a few things just to get ahead of the game. I'm gonna call that, the user is MQTT. And I guess the thing I'm not showing is how to set up MQTT in Home Assistant. So that's a whole other thing. But it's not hard either. It's like a like a ten click process to like install an add-on or whatever. Maybe a five click process. Uh, I'm gonna do that. No, I don't care if you save that. But once you have MQTT set up in Home Assistant, you do that once. And I think some of these devices can even get um, auto detected, so maybe you don't even have to set up this stuff. I'm gonna call this S3105. Because it's the fifth of its lineage. Or the fifth of its kind in my house. And it's rebooting. <laughs> Ten clicks, what is this, 2003? Yeah, pretty much. I guess that's the thing we get for open source, is it's not slick. Okay. So I think I'm going to disconnect it from um, the uh, serial programming pins. So then we, uh, I'll go back to this view. You can see my gross hands. Get all these pins off of here. Hopefully this one's easier to reassemble than the one I was wrestling with. But yeah, it's a pretty simple disassembly too. Wait, what am I doing wrong here? Oh, I'm, <laughs> derp, I'm putting it this way, it goes this way. Even an idiot can do this. Yeah, it's like three screws, two little rails. The one thing that these don't have that I kind of wish they had, and maybe you can get it into firmware, I don't know. Um, I kind of wish it had dimming, which it doesn't have. But I mean, it was like seven bucks, so I can't ask too much of it. Yeah, wild that this consumer device has serial port pins. Yeah, they sun off. It was kind of like a not a famous brand. I I have heard that they seem to do that with all their stuff, which makes them kind of like a sleeper hit with DIY home enthusiasts. All right. So the other thing, maybe this time it'll go in easier. I know there's an angled edge here. There's an angled edge here. <laughs> that time it just went together. 
It didn't go together that easy last time. All right. I'm just a dummy. It's all right, I'm gonna write five on here. Give it a proper label when I get in. It's all right. I'll plug her back in over here. I don't know, you could probably see this light from the overhead cam, so I'm not gonna move this. But what we can do, come back to this. Yeah, so now you can probably see... Oh, that's the thing you can't see. But what you can see is, as I click my mouse button... Oh yeah, you can see the little screen right there. So now, the Wi-Fi bit is working. I'm gonna go back to uh, Home Assistant. Settings. Devices and services. Tasmoda now sees five devices. So there's our new one. I don't know what I'm going to use this for yet, so I'm not going to name it anything. Um, oh, but I did miss one thing in the configuration. This is not a Sonoff Basic. This is a Sonoff S31. I think that just changes... I think that might enable the uh, energy monitoring. I think the Sonoff Basic is just a switch. So it's restarting. It has restarted. Yeah, this still thinks it's a Sonoff Basic, but it'll probably update at some point. Yeah, there it goes. So yeah, here's all the sensors. Like, it can tell uh, what voltage is coming out of the wall. It can tell me uh, what current is being used. So like when I turn it on and off... Um... Oh yeah, that's the other cool thing too, is in Home Assistant, everything's logged. So you can see if your automations worked and at what time they worked and all that. Yeah, so that one is good for now. I got like 10 minutes left in my planned, uh, my streaming plan. Let's do one more and see if I can do it even faster. Got one more right here. That's the sun off. Fresh in box. I guess you could say I'm faking it because it's not like the box is taped, but I don't know. Fresh in box. Spudger. That went across my workbench. I don't think it broke though. Get off the rails. <laughs> Clearly deep fake. Well, I, I have uh, been tasked by work to start looking into more AI shit, so uh, this could be my practice. Wait until I start having like six and seven fingers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, last screw. And then, yeah, this thing just pulls out of the housing, real easy. Another little tour of the guts. Like, I think most of this is just like trying to siphon three volts off the, uh, the wall power. And then I'm pretty sure the microcontroller is on the underside of here, although... No, I actually think it might all be in this board. Yeah, but anyways. A little look at this thing, here's the programming button. Is the serial pads. I'm gonna unplug my uh, serial interface for now. All right. Black goes to ground. So this is, again, this is hooking up the serial interface for programming. And these little like spring-loaded um, pogo probes are nice because they can just kind of grab onto the board. And it's just enough contact to be able to do what needs to be done. And then let's see, I'm not remembering my colors. Green is receive, which means... Green is receive on the serial interface, which means green goes to transmit on the device. 
Blue is transmit from serial, so blue goes to receive on the device. And red is power. And these colors don't mean anything other than red and black I picked. The consistency. So okay, I think I got that. Now for the the tricky part. I've done it okay twice so far. I gotta hold this button while I jack this in. And I think I... we'll see if I did it in just a second. Now... Back to the browser. Cross fingers, this works right now. Again. Boop-a-doo! Connect. Serial part 5. Connecting. And... Awesome! So it looks like I did it again. Did the little, like, sleight of hand and got it to uh, connect. This would be a great device. Most of the circuitry is power supply for the circuit. Yeah, great device for a teardown video. Yeah, I'm, I'm slightly tempted now that I've played with a few of these to, like, get another one and just, like, rip it all down. Okay, so now you can see the red light is pulsing. You can't really see the green light next to it, but it's doing, like, packets and confirmation. You're at 38, 41%. Yeah, like, one of the scariest things about this device is it works off wall power, which I don't fuck with much. Um, but 90% of what I do with this thing, it doesn't touch the wall power. Which is what... Part of what's great about this flashing process. All right, wrapping up. Installation complete. Cool. So next step is to. I think I have learned. Next step is remove power. Reapply power. Try to connect again. And there it goes. Cool. So it detected uh, I just installed this firmware on that microcontroller. Now I'm going to get on my, uh, my Wi-Fi network. That is the one downside of this, is if you change your Wi-Fi point, you got to reset all the passwords. I think there's a procedure for it where it's something funky, like you connect it to a power strip and you flip the power strip on and off seven times and it re resets to factory defaults. And I think at that point you can connect to a uh, custom Wi-Fi SSID on there and, and do all this with a smartphone. I'm doing it this way because I'm, I'm connected with uh, Serial anyways. So, okay, so this is uh, S3106. It's the sixth one I have. Save that. That's also annoying because it reboots after every reconfiguration, but whatever. It's just a little guy. All right, and now we want to configure MQTT. That's where my home assistant is. I'm going to do that. I guess I could have been hiding this password the whole time, but I did not. All right. Anything else I got to configure? Configure module. Oh, yeah, I got to tell it that this is a uh, Sonoff S31. And again, I think I've learned this part's important because this is what um, enables the power managing stuff. You've been dealing with semi professional remote managed routing equipment that doesn't reboot when you push a new configuration. Yeah, it's always good to reboot when you. Yeah, I guess so. Turn it off, turn it back on again, make sure everything has, like, the state has reset. And this thing doesn't have a whole lot of smarts, so uh, hot reload of uh, configurations probably not to be expected. 
Um, logging. Oh, I know the other thing I haven't looked at on here. You can look at main menu, console. Awesome. This I hadn't looked at the previous two I flashed in this stream. It has a log. You can see what it's doing. Um, it, you can see it came up and it successfully connected to my home assistant, I think is what it says in here. But yeah, so this is all the data it's throwing at uh, home assistant. But then if I go to home assistant, and I go back to Tasmoda. Okay, so now Tasmoda has detected the sixth uh, device. And then now I can like zero, I can like look at details in this device. Now I'm going to unhook it. I'm going to reassemble it, plug it into my power strip. See if that works. Yeah, I feel like I should have bought a dozen of these because I got faster with each time I tried it, and now I'm all done. Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes I think professional equipment um, should do things for you. <laughs> Just to save you time as a professional. Like it's like they know it's, you know what you're doing, but also like it knows what you're going to do. So maybe it should just do the needful. All right. Now the next stream, assuming I do one again very soon. Yeah, the next thing I want to do, we've got some uh, blinds in our kitchen that work from uh, remote control. I bought a little 2.4 gigahertz radio transceiver that's supposed to work with uh, Arduino. I want to sniff the protocol from the remote control and uh, spoof it and hook that up to Home Assistant too, because that'd be cool. So I'm gonna do a little more research and see if I can get that to work. All right. Line up the angled edge with the angled edge of the device, and well, I guess now I know how they go together. All right, so that's all back together. Yeah, it took me like 10 minutes to put the first one back together. That was annoying. All right, so we'll hook this back into my power strip. It's off. Back to Home Assistant. And it is working. You can see the little power strip light go on and off and I click this little thing. So that's it. Actually good timing because I'm at about an hour streaming. So I think I'm going to sign off pretty quick here and uh, go check on dinner. But yeah, so that's it. I flashed uh, three of these little devices. Took me less than an hour because part of the hour was me putzing around the stupid things. Um, so yeah, I guess I could show, um, real quick, let me see, do, 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 I think I showed last stream what these devices are. Oh yeah, here they are. Yeah, yeah, here it is. Do, do, there we go. This is what I, what I'm playing with. They're like, okay, they're eight bucks right now. So yeah, these are like eight bucks on Amazon. Um, they're nice. One thing that's nice about them is they show them here like in a standard wall plug. You can stick two of them in the same outlet because they're like a horizontal orientation. That's kind of nice. Um, and I think like out of the box, they work with like popular app control crap, but um, and this is specifically the S31. I haven't tried the S40s. So I don't know if they're that easy. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Yeah, it works with Alexa, works with Google, whatever. Pretty, pretty skookum. I think they can take up to like 15 amps. I haven't tried controlling a, a coffee pot with it yet, but I might, like a microwave or a coffee pot. Not that I really need to. Coffee pot might be good. So yeah, 
that went pretty quick. Um, I'm gonna go check on my chicken. Thanks for uh, stopping by and watching me do this real quick. And if you uh, feel like grabbing one of these yourself, I don't have an affiliate link, just in, enjoy the Amazon hegemony or whatever. All right. I'll see y'all later, folks.